Hi, Dad. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sam and Ryan channel. My name is Sam. My name is Ryan. And this is another episode of Versus. It's a V and an S. Da. Good job. Versus. Today, we are doing depression versus anxiety. So, you know, a fun one. You know, a really lighthearted, fun one. We're gonna have a great time. I'm Ryan, I'll be playing the role of depression. <laughs> I'm Samantha, I will be playing the role of anxiety. Now, we are not just talking out of our butts here. I have a lot of experience with anxiety and you're depressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, <laughs> it's true though. So there's our qualification. <laughs> oh my God. What else do you need to know? Really? Nothing, what a, what Nothing. a flawless what a great intro. intro. If you're new here, this is how the show works. We have a big bowl of questions in the center and each side just takes a turn to grab a question and then we both answer and discuss. So, Ryan, would you like to go first? I don't know, I just feel so sad right now. Oh no, not this. Not sadness from inside out. Oh, I was being depressed <laughs> Oh, Ryan's brain. And then you said, oh no, <laughs> not this. Woof, keeping that in the edit so everyone can see. It's going well already. What's a piece of advice you've gotten in terms of your depression or anxiety that's worth sharing? Wow, advice that I've gotten. That's such a good question. Who writes these? I think that very specifically with depression, and maybe this is with other things too, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, but very early on in therapy, my therapist told me that sometimes the chemical imbalance that is causing depression is cyclical, as in it, it just sort of happens in a sequence. It's not necessarily, often it is, but it's not necessarily triggered by something. I realized very quickly that I definitely applied to that. Before I knew that, what would happen is I would just naturally get depressed just kind of because my brain was in that cycle. I would naturally get depressed. It wasn't based on anything. It was just the way that I was feeling at the time. But then I would go into the events of my life and try to diagnose, oh, I must be depressed because so-and-so said this thing. Oh, I must be depressed because I'm in a relationship that's not working when it really was, or because I hate my parents when I really didn't. Mm. I, would, I would misdiagnose it. I would I would create an, a cause and effect relationship with my depression where there wasn't one. And um, so that's a really good piece of advice of just like, okay, sometimes it just happens for no reason. Like sometimes I'm just feeling depressed just because I am. Sometimes I'm feeling anxious just because I am. Exactly. You know, that it's not directly linked to something. And then to that end, I think as well, then the piece of it is like acceptance. I am, I am depressed. I have depression. I have to just accept that if I fight it and say no I don't and I can't have these feelings and this isn't a, pr a proper way to feel you make it so much worse and those two piece of, pieces of advice separately but also in conjunction with each other have really helped me live with this. For me something that was fundamental in dealing with my anxiety well is one going to therapy I Absolutely. think that's the best piece of advice I've ever gotten. Actually true, yeah. Really, <laughs> is really. talk to a licensed professional. Yes. Something that's really helped me understand my anxiety is knowing that the body's response, like fight or flight, anxiety is a natural occurrence. Like, like it is a survival instinct. Mm. And that has just helped me to some degree to just like, you know, uh, know what is happening in my body. Like when the physical symptoms start, it's like, okay, I know what this is. Like this is anxiety. The best piece of advice about anxiety that I've ever received from my therapist, and also like you've told me this as well, is um, to not have feelings about your feelings. That's where it gets dangerous for me. That's where my anxiety turns into catastrophizing, going to the worst case scenario uh, in like two seconds, it is when I start to feel anxious and then I try to find why I'm anxious or I get really upset about the fact that I am anxious. Right. You know, it, 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 for me, it really is a down, downward spiral that can happen very quickly. But the thing that causes that spiral is having feelings about your feelings. If I am feeling anxious, anxious and I'm able to just go, okay, this is anxiety. I don't really need to figure out where it's coming from right now. 
Um, you can. Yeah. Sometimes which, that helps. Which sometimes it does help me for anxiety. This is where I think depression and anxiety can be different. Well, but it, I think it helps with depression too. Sometimes it helps. It's exactly. one tool in the tool belt to say where is this coming from. Not exactly. always, but sometimes. And the biggest uh, tool that my therapist gave me with my anxiety was evidence gathering. I'm having an anxiety attack. Okay, let me look around for a second. Is there anything that is a threat to me right now? Is there anything that backs up these catastrophizing thoughts that I'm having right now? Do I actually need to prepare for a worst case scenario right now? Let me look around. No? Okay. Then, then that's where I cut myself off right. from having feelings about my feelings. The best piece of advice I've ever gotten. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh yes, tradition. the honored tradition of verses. Mm, could have been better. I'll huh, you know. Next time. Next yeah. time. Look at the next one. Okay. <clears throat> How does your depression or anxiety affect your social life? This is really interesting for me because I think I have just discovered the terminology for my like form of anxiety, but I have high functioning anxiety, meaning that I can function very well in a high state of anxiety. So it's very important for me to make myself stop and slow down sometimes because I'm also an extrovert. So sometimes mm -hmm. I'm just like, I, I'm very anxious. I'm very stressed. I've been dealing with a lot, but you know what? I just need people. My, my, my knee jerk reaction is I want to be social. I want to see people because I'm an extrovert and that's how I get my energy. However, I still have a lot of anxiety coming down into the social time. So I don't know that it clearly affects my social life, but on the inside, there are moments where I will be in a room with friends and everything is fun and going fine, but I revert inwards and have a moment of like, I really should be alone and just like focus on what's going on right now with my anxiety. Like I, I, I should have taken an hour before going into this social time. And so sometimes it takes me a while to adjust to being social. It's kind of sad that I've learned how, how to function out of my anxiety so well, uh, because it makes it very easy for me to just push through mm -hmm. uh, and basically just exist in a really high state of anxiety. So I actually feel like for the most part, it doesn't really affect my social life other than internally. Right, it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect your social, social life, life, but it affects it, you. But it, but it affects me. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, so same but different. Like I'm an introvert and I like my alone time anyway, but when I'm depressed, sometimes that alone time becomes less medicinal and more misanthropic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like distancing myself from everyone, you know. Uh, I think the way that it used to affect my social life is encouraging the secret keeping because what I'll own is I had a lot of friends who I did not feel comfortable sharing how I was actually feeling with. Mm. And I am 27 years old. I'm a grown butt man. And I have just now created a social network of people where I know if we're partying on a Friday night, I can say like, yeah, I'm just depressed today. And they'll be like, okay, noted. I, we don't have to have a full conversation about it. I don't have to diagnose you. I'm not your therapist, but you've told me and it was important that you told me. Now I know I'm not gonna treat you any different, but if you need something, I'm gonna be here for you. It has taken me that long to find those people because I was more afraid of being judged than I was willing to supplement my life with people that I needed. Don't make the same mistake as me. So the way that it affects my social life now is if I feel depressed, I'm a really good actor. I can pretend through it. I can, but I don't want to. And so finally I'm at the point where I don't have to and I can show up and just be like, oh, how you doing today? Instead of just being like, good, you? I'll be like, I'm just depressed today. It's like, oh man, yeah, it, it'd be like that sometimes. Wanna play Cards Against Humanity? And yeah. off we go, you know what I mean? So thankfully that's where I'm at now, but it's, it's taken a long time and that was the fear talking. And I'm glad that um, I finally got to a place where that isn't the case anymore. Still not as far as you. But a valiant effort. Thank you. <clears throat>
Is there any way your depression or anxiety serves you? Interesting. The first answer that comes to mind is like when I'm depressed, I can write a mean ballad. Yeah. You know, like I write, I write some good songs when I'm depressed. <laughs> In a broader way though, I, I think that like, I've spent most of my life ignoring this part of me or, or just making the conscious choice not to acknowledge it. As a consequence, I was, n I was never being my true and authentic self with people. Now that I am acknowledging that, I am bringing everything to the table in all of my relationships. The, the, the parts of me that are, that are happy-go-lucky and energized and the parts of me that are depressed too. Before it felt that it was almost necessary for me to ignore these things, and as a consequence, sort of necessary to keep everyone else at a distance. Now it is necessary for me to share every piece of me, and I never have to doubt that the people in my life are actually here for me, actually love me, actually support me, because they know everything. All the surface level stuff and all the deeper, more complicated mm -hmm. things. So in a strange way, acknowledging my depression has strengthened all of my relationships. Like I said before, anxiety is a natural phenomenon. And because I experience a lot of anxiety, I have learned to listen to my anxiety in the moment. And I know how to assess, is this a anxious what if thought that is gonna lead to catastrophizing or is this the natural human response to being in a situation that I should not be in, that I don't wanna be in, that puts me at risk, either physically or emotionally? Like, I, I, I'm very in tune with myself now. Mm. And, and that's because of my anxiety. That's because of my mental health journey. I know how to check in with myself mm. and ask myself those important questions of where is this thought coming from? That's so huge. I feel very similarly with my journey that like, I, I'm so in tune with how I feel now. I'm not ignoring it, I'm not repressing it. It is, it is so active in me. Like, that's a that's like a superpower and again it's not in spite of my depression it's not in spite mm. of your anxiety it's because of it's it it's because of it like that's like dope. that's a really good takeaway let's see oh Oof, i almost close. beat my last one close all right two more you guys having fun out there checking in with yourself <laughs> Is Ryan gonna cut this out of the video? Who knows? Absolutely. <laughs> everyone, everyone got a drink? <laughs> All right. You feel good out there? How's the audience doing? <laughs> What's a stigma about your depression or anxiety that isn't true? I need to think about this one. I have mine. Okay. And I, I don't know if this is like a, a general societal stigma, but I know at least for me, I had stigmatized that depression meant sadness. I don't feel sad. I feel exhausted. I feel, I feel lethargic. I feel like there's a weight on me. Like I, I don't, my depression doesn't make me cry. My depression doesn't make me feel bad. My depression makes me want to stay in bed all day. And not because like, oh, I just can't tolerate the idea of like living, my, like of just like, I want to sleep. Mm. Like it, that, that it is depression. Not that it's sadness, that it is depression. It depresses me, like, like taking the air out of a tire. Uh -huh. Like the, the fact that depression and sadness are not synonymous uh, was new to me. Yeah, I think the stigma around anxiety is that it looks like someone who is just like a nervous wreck all the time. And that's sometimes Anxiety is that visible, but other times it's not. Right, I mean, I think that's a really good point about mental health in general. Yes. The stigma that mental health is visible. Yeah. That if, if I'm depressed, you can see, see it, it because I'm just this storm cloud all the time. If you're anxious all the time, you can I'm see it because like... you're constantly picking at your skin. Yeah. Like, it's not, 
it's not so visible all the time. Mm. And sometimes it's buried very deep. And sometimes people can barrel through it and barrel through it and barrel through it until it's sort of too late. And then they exactly. have a breakdown because they haven't, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> there's there's a lot of ways that this goes. It materializes, metastasizes and, and you know, makes itself known in mm. so many different ways for so many different people. There are so many times I'll, I'll tell people I'm depressed and they're like, what, you? Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm telling I'm acting like it all the time. <laughs> Mental and it, health doesn't look like anything. Like, and it's, I, I'm not depressed because I have depression. That doesn't mean I'm depressed every day. Yeah. Three weeks out of the month, I'm like nailing it. And then it's sort of like one week, I'm just sort of like, oh my God, here it is. Yeah. You know, and that's literally how mine goes. Mine is like a, is like a cycle. Fascinating, this is a great conversation. Very fascinating. Should we do the, oh wait, go wait, ahead. Wait, I have do, to do the, do honors, the honors. Do the honors. Bah. Terrible. Oh, that was one horrible. One of the worst ones. Last one, you ready? I am now ready. All right. How do you feel on your worst day? Ooh. Ending it with a, with a. With a nice, light, positive, <laughs> fun one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I sort of alluded to this, but like on my worst day, I feel exhausted. I feel tired. Like that is, that is the main way that my depression manifests. I can sleep for 16 hours and still feel like I didn't get a wink. Like low energy, lethargy, not wanting to do anything, not because I can't face it, not because I'm like cripplingly sad. I understand that that's how it is for some people and everyone has their own journey. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no better or worse, there's just different. But like for me, it's not like, oh my God, I can't do that because like I, I feel so sad or I don't want to. It's like, I literally can't do that. Mm -hmm. It's like It's like a symptom of the flu. Like I just, all I want is to be sleeping. And you know, maybe there's some like deeper psychosocial thing going on there where I just know that it only lasts for a week. So if I can just sleep through the week, <laughs> I'll come out on the other side that it's almost like a hibernation. I'm not, I'm not exactly yeah. sure where it comes from. Hmm. And, and that's, that's also how I feel on my, on my worst day. Like, is this depression or not? I'm trying to do that mental Rubik's cube of like, where am I trying to align all that? For me, my worst day with anxiety actually is more of a worse night because of the way that my anxiety affects me. I want to do a lot. I feel like if I accomplish things, that'll like soothe my anxiety. But <laughs> then it's nighttime and I cannot sleep. My physical symptoms of anxiety are the worst when I am trying to go to sleep. Sometimes I won't even acknowledge my anxiety throughout the day because I'm like, oh, I'm just like super productive or whatever. Like that's why I'm getting so much stuff done. I'm not avoiding anything. And then I lay down to go to bed and my heart rate is through the roof. Like my stomach feels like it's twisting and I feel stuck in that. And it's very scary because feeling your heart rate yeah. feel like a hummingbird yeah. is very scary because it's not supposed to feel like that. And then I get into the mental gymnastics of trying to talk myself down from it. And then that's when I have to resort to touch really helps me. Uh, you know, having you like to to just physically touch really helps. Mm, I and you're just gonna having me in general. But... Well, having you in general <laughs> does really help. But then also uh, getting my brain onto anything else. And this is when we put Turn on, on Friends TV, yeah. at 2 a.m. Uh, you know, I fall asleep to the TV. I, I go to my comfort shows because I know exactly what's going to happen in the shows and I know it's going to make me laugh or, or calm me down a little bit. So, so my, my worst day is really like at night when my anxiety mm. is just spiraling because there's nothing for me to do other than lay down and, and experience it. Right. And it's so interesting your point about fight or flight. Like, so your natural impulse is fight. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, the anxiety's here, whether I know it consciously or not, 
here it is. So I'm going to fight through it. I'm going to fight through it. I'm going to fight through it. And then the nighttime comes, there's nothing else to fight there's nothing. through. Yeah. So your body is all amped. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. And you can't, do, can't anything do anything with it. So your body's like, okay, we'll get rid of it some, some other way. We'll pump our heart really fast. Mm -hmm. We'll move our, our blood, you know, and then you are like, oh my God, I'm dying. But your yeah. body's just, it's still I like feel fighting. like I'm having a heart attack, right. like sometimes. Whereas like I, you know, even though it's not anxiety, like my sort of fight or flight, those natural adrenal impulses, I think I go to flight. Mm. I'll just escape the world and hibernate yeah. until this is over. You know, it's just so interesting. Like you, 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 you break it down biologically and it actually makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. where these things come from. Yeah. Uh, even though they suck sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna do the last football and then we'll say goodbye. Do to the last guys. football. I want this to Make be it the a biggest one. one. Oh, oh it well, wasn't. I still won though. <laughs> Congratulations. Couldn't beat myself, but I still won. I really hope you enjoyed this video and this discussion and hearing our experiences with mental health and depression and anxiety. Hopefully there's something that you could take away from this video that either helps you start or continue your own mental health journey. For whatever it's worth, just always making sure we're including these disclaimers. This is our individual experiences with our individual form of how these things manifest mm -hmm. in us. This is not by any way like an instruction manual or like if you have depression or anxiety, how you're supposed to be feeling. Mm -hmm. That like if you don't feel this way, there's something wrong with your individual brand of it. Like that's not yeah. what we're saying. We are not doctors. This is like, it's none of that. This is just a, a, a conversation because we think conversations about these things are important, if nothing else, to normalize the fact that it's okay to talk about these yes, things. Yes, exactly. Talk about mental health. Yas, queen. And like and subscribe. Obviously. Obviously. Do those three things for a wonderful, healthy life. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you very soon. YouTube, YouTube, bye. YouTube, now. YouTube, bye. Oh.